Good evening, gentlemen. Mr. Otis, this place properly belongs to you. Thank you, Doctor. There you are, sir. Thank you. Now, Sammy, let's see. You had got as far as for this we will fight. Well, I've not always agreed with you, but you are right in that. In all conscience, Mr. Otis, this committee cannot declare for war. Determination to defend our rights, yes. Necessary preparations to do so. But war? Only if war is made against us. A splendid resolve, Doctor. But it doesn't alter fact. The fatal shot will come whoever is to pull the trigger. When it does, then fight we must and fight we will. But for what? This is the thing we must know. That the whole world must know. For what do we fight? Tell me that. To rid ourselves of these infernal redcoats. That's no reason for blood on our land, Paul. We've earned these redcoats. We've shouted our treason in the press and the public squares for 10 long years without hindrance. And did ever an occupied city receive better treatment than we of Boston have had? Where are the firing squads? The jails filled with political prisoners? The gallows erected for Paul Revere. Samuel Cooper. Sammy Adams. And Joseph Warren. I hate the presence of these troops of the ministry as much as any of you. But we are not going off into a civil war just to get them out of Boston. Tell me why then. Why do we fight? To end tyrannous taxation. Something more important than our precious pocketbooks. But what is it? The rights of Englishmen. Ah. Now we have a glimmer. And it is prophetic that it should shine brightest in the eyes of youth. Rights, yes. But why stop with Englishmen? Is the earth so small there can be room for only one people? Or can we here fight for men and women and children all over the world? For this we can have war. That there shall be no more tyranny that a few men cannot seize power over thousands, that wherever the sun shines, a man shall choose who shall rule over him. The rights of Englishmen, you say, lad. The battles we shall win over the worst in England will benefit the best in England until the end of time. Even as we shoot down British soldiers, we will be winning rights their children shall enjoy forever. And the peoples of the world, the peasants of France and the serfs of Russia, shall see freedom rising like a new sun in the West. For this we fight. Those natural rights God has given every man, no matter how humble. Or crazy. They say my injury bashed the wits from my head. That's what you think, isn't it, Sammy? Well, certainly not, sir. Perhaps it's true. Some of us will give our wits. Some will give our property. Let those of substance among you think of that. Gold and jewels and fine great houses. It hurts, doesn't it? You, friend Paul, God made you to fashion silver, not to make war. There's a time for casting silver, time for casting cannon. If that isn't in the writ, it should be. And you, Dr. Warren, of what use are the fine mind and the skilled hands of the surgeon when they have been mangled in battle? Then others must do what I no longer can. And you who are so young, some of you must die. To die young is more than dying. It's to lose so large a part of life. You, my old friend, my old enemy, how can I call you? Even you will give the best you have a genius for politics. And we need you, Sammy. For we must fight this war in meeting house, in Congress, in the halls of Parliament, as well as on the field. But what it's all about, you'll really never know. And yet it, it is so much simpler than any of you think. We give all we have. We fight. We die for a simple thing. 
Only that a man can stand.